Well, that was fun. Uh, cleaned everything in preparation for reassembly. And as you just saw, I tested this regulator and it tested fine. And earlier I tested this diode rectifier assembly. This was okay. So the only thing that I've managed to find that was bad were the slip rings. Um, actually, only one of them was bad. This one was okay. This one really bad. So I went ahead and picked myself up a set of genuine new old, old stock um, Lucas made slip rings. And uh, I also found that this little noise suppression capacitor on the outside was, was bad as well. But I haven't found another one of these yet, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble it anyway and deal with this later. So, uh, yeah, new SKF bearings. Thanks, AC, for recommending a uh, higher quality bearing that would typically come in your rebuild kits. So I'm just going to go ahead and start assembling all these pieces, and um, eventually I will take it out and uh, give it a test. So we'll be able to get a, a final reading on, on how this unit does. But, um, yeah, overall... Like I said, I was, I was expecting to find either the regulator or the diode, you know, one of these two pieces to have gone bad, but that simply was the case. Oh, and also, I'm not going to be replacing the, the brushes. There's plenty of material on these, so I'm just going to reuse them. So, that's the plan, and um, yeah, just watch while I reassemble this Before thing. I put it together, I just want to show how nice this case is. That vapor honing process sure does a good job on these aluminum parts. Um, I did not do in here very much just because, you know, it's an area that no one sees. But I really focused on, on the outside here. Same with the uh, the front piece. Yeah, looks, looks brand new. Or, you know, really nice. Also, I, I cleaned and chased the threads on this um, mounting bolt here. So this is all good to go as well. First piece I need to deal with is the front bearing here, and it gets installed with a very interesting collection of crap. So there's a felt washer for, you know, collecting dust, and then there's this metal spacer top hat piece, a rubber gasket, square, square sized piece of rubber o-ring, I don't know what the hell this is, and then the bearing, and then the other top hat piece. Uh, the original bearing wasn't a sealed type. It was this open, non-sealed. So I can kind of understand why they have all these. Yeah, this is the one. Um, why all these pieces? But, you know, I'm using a sealed bearing, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I do need to install these pieces because they do control the amount of thrust. This, just get rid of. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to install it like this without the piece of felt. But it gets knocked into here. Like that. And then the... Um, spring clip comes in after the fact and holds it all in. Well, that took some fiddling, but in the end, it's installed. Notice the way the circ clip goes in with the uh, inner inner spacer piece here. Um, the high part is on the center, the low part's out here for the, the clip to ride against. So yeah, I just kind of started one end, just tapped it around with a little punch to get seated, seated nicely. But anyway, that's the first step. So after this is in, um, go ahead and fit this in here. I'll have to press the, uh, the housing onto the bearing. But once that's fitted, I can then install the uh, the keyway and all the uh, pulley parts and then at that point I'll set this onto a pair of blocks of wood so I can work on the electrical end and get the, uh, the insulator fitted as well as the uh, the new slip rings. But yeah I did this a bit of a paint job while I was in here. Um, a light wire brushing to get most of the, the scaly rust off and then just taped off the wiring to prevent it from getting painted. But I think it came out pretty nice. Hopefully it lasts a while. Well, I've got the uh, motor pressed into this bearing. Um, one of the two spacers goes on the inside. Make sure you paid any attention to which one goes where when you took it apart, but there is an outer one as well. So fit that and then get the uh, 
get the pulleys and all this stuff hooked up. Oh, and there's a keyway that goes here. There's a keyway there. The key goes in there first. Um, but I'll get, do all that stuff, get the pulley on, and then I'll start working on the electrics. So just for reference, spacer, key, this piece. Then the fan. That gives you the proper clearance. Then you've got your um, pulley, lock washer, and then the nut. So that's how you assemble this front half. So I fit a little blue plastic piece back onto the motor shaft here, and um, now it's time to fit the two new old stock slip rings onto the shaft. And uh, what will happen is you'll slide one, well actually you'll slide both of them over. You'll notice there's one large hole, one small hole, small holes for the soldering. So on the red wire, what we'll do is we'll slip on small post down, solder it, and then we'll bring in the second one and it'll go the other way around so that it slips over. But yeah, you want the, want the first one to go on with the larger hole sliding over the green wire so that it goes through the first slip ring to the second one. So I'll go ahead and fire up the soldering iron and get these two, oh, two slip rings fitted. So while I'm waiting for that thing to heat up, I can go ahead and assemble the diode pack and the brush box and the voltage regulator um, onto this front cover plate. So this thing just kind of drops in here like this. And I'll need to make sure you use some anti-seize on these screws. And the brush box sits like that. And the voltage, voltage regulator goes on like that. And we'll hook up to the tabs uh, once I once I get there. Anyway, yeah, these two screw down to the the upper um, brush, and this one connects to the ground down here, and this screws into the lower one. So until I get the brushes uh, fitted, I can't screw down the the regulator. But that's kind of how it is going to get fitted. And also, this tells you the orientation of where the wires need to come out for the um, the windings here. So it needs to kind of go like this. So all the windings line up where they were before. All right, first screws up are these three here. And got the NICs, so we'll just do them up. Make them nice and oozy. Now, I have paid attention to the bottom of this, so I've gone ahead and cleaned all of the ground surfaces with the wire wheel so that the case and the this get uh, good ground contact. So before I screw this in, I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on all, all these three surfaces just to make sure that this stays as clean as long as possible before um, any corrosion starts setting in. It's kind of like the belt and suspenders option. One or the other would be just fine, but honestly, what's the harm in having both here? And screw it all down.
Well, in the time it took me to get this assembled, the uh, soldering iron is hot now, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to doing the uh, slip rings. And first thing I need to do is get the excess solder off of these wires. They're just a little too thick to go through the holes in there. Alright, got the excess solder off. And again, we're slipping the green wire through the larger hole and soldering the red wire to the smaller hole. All while we have to press this down onto the shaft. But before I can fit those slip rings, I need to make sure that I fit the bearing on here first. Because the bearing goes here and then the slip rings go on top. You'll notice I've finished assembling this. Um, just thought it'd be easier to do now while I was waiting for the soldering iron to heat up. So, as you can see, got the first slip ring fitted, and the first wire, just need to fold this over and solder it on, and then fit the second slip ring on top and solder that one on. And then I'll be ready to slip the uh, the ring on and slip this into here. So now that I got the slip rings on, and the bearing, uh, it's time to fit this. So we need to line up the three wires to the three wires here. So there's the middle wire, there's the middle post, and then we gotta see where the lug is. So the lug is here. So that these two halves are gonna get lined up this way which means that the ring needs to go in something like that. So I'll just slip all this together and then get it all lined up. Now that I've got everything lined up, it's time to solder these three wires on. You'll notice I fitted the bolts to hold the two halves together. So just got to get everything nice and hot and get all these wires soldered in place. Solder one, solder two, solder three. So this is only waiting for reassembly of this with a brush set and the remaining hardware and the back plate. And then off for testing it goes. I'm gonna fit the brushes next. They uh, a little rubber gasket here and they're actually, I'll call them keyed for lack of a better description. So. This is one style and this is the other style, so you can't really install them in, in the wrong positions because they just don't fit. So as an example, this is the upper one here because it has a screw hole here that interlocks with this one. So I'll get these installed and uh, get this secured. Well, we're down to fitting the cover and fitting the little stamping plate here and the little adjuster bar over here. And there we have it, all back together. One rebuilt A115 45 amp Lucas alternator. I did not put on the noise suppression capacitor because that capacitor has failed, so I need to find a new one. Um, next step for this is to go off and get load tested, and we'll get a report from that and see what uh, what this thing turns out to, to provide. It's supposed to provide 45 amps, as you can see right there, at full uh, full output. But we'll see. I'll get it tested and let you guys know. Well, I bet you guys are expecting some test results, but nah, I didn't have the time to do it. So I'm going to save the test results for part three when I have more time to explain what I have to do and how to do the testing. Otherwise, this video would probably be a half hour long. So stay tuned for part three where I actually do all the testing and um, verify that this, in fact, does produce 45 amps. And, uh, if you guys thought this was interesting or helpful, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.